Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about the great Satan of Linux, Windows 10. <laughs> uh, and I want to talk a little bit about that first. There are many reasons why you'd want to use Windows 10. I personally have a uh, uh, I dual boot Windows 10 sometimes. I have a partition for it, but I don't get into it very often, right? Um, I, ha I have it so I can play Hearthstone, which is a, you know, a game from Blizzard. And they don't have a Linux client because they're bad, bad people. And so I have to get into Windows in order to play it. But the thing is, it's such a pain in the ass to have to go through and log out of Linux, shut my computer down reboot into Windows 10, deal with all the Windows 10 startup issues because, you know, 10,000 things start up every time you start up Windows and you got all those pop-up notifications and half the time, oh, you got to do a, a, a system update before you can do anything and we're going to reboot whether you like it or not. It's a pain in the ass. <laughs> now, I'm not here to solve those problems today, but, or at least not all those problems. <clears throat> today, I'm going to talk about how to install Windows 10 in VirtualBox on Linux. Now, these instructions are specifically on an Arch install. I'm pretty sure they'll be the same on every Linux distribution, but you don't quote me on that. So the first thing you're gonna, there are some prerequisites you're going to need. There, you'll need a Windows 10 ISO. I will leave a link to that in the description below. You'll need VirtualBox installed and set up and you'll need your computer configured to run virtual machines. Um, those first two are really easy. There's a lot of uh, there's a, a lot of instructions on how to install VirtualBox, but just installing is not enough. It's that third one that's going to be a problem for a lot of people. If you're running an Intel processor, chances are you're going to be good to go. Um, most, and I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that all most modern Intel processors. Uh, come out of the box supporting virtualization. You don't have to do any settings. Now, if you're running a Ryzen or anything like that from AMD, you will have to go into your BIOS and, and enable virtualization. Um, how you do that is going to be very hardware dependent. In other words, it's going to depend on what motherboard you have. If you have a you know a custom motherboard from a you know, a, you know like Dell or something, or if you've built your own computer, it might be different. Um, where that is is going to be dependent a lot on your BIOS. Uh, so you'll have to find out what hardware you have and then Google how do I enable virtualization technology and you should be able to find a tutorial not too hard. It's usually just like one checkbox, but it differs depending on what hardware you have. Okay, so if you have those three things, you've got when you got VirtualBox installed and you have your Windows 10 ISO downloaded, the, you'll want to go through it and start VirtualBox it looks something like this. You won't have all these extra uh, machines here because obviously I've done some machines before. Um, but your first step is to click New. And you'll want to name this your Windows 10. And I'm going to call this Windows 10 2. Uh, you'll want to store this in a VirtualBox folder. But chances are, it, I think it creates this for you. I'm not sure. Um, if not, just create one called VirtualBox VMs. And you'll want to select Microsoft Windows from this drop-down. You'll want to select Microsoft 10 64-bit. Now, you might select the 32-bit if that's the version of the ISO you downloaded. So if, when you download the ISO, you get to choose between 32 and 64. Whichever one you downloaded, that's the one you're going to want to choose from this list. Okay. Then you want to hit Next. And you'll want to select the memory size of the VirtualBox. Now, the virtual machine. This uh, is going to depend on how much RAM you have in your computer. I usually give this around eight gigabytes because I have 64 gigs in my computer. Um, it's not like Windows or Linux. Linux, you could probably get away with giving it, giving it four gigs, but Windows, you want to give it a nice, nice, healthy amount of RAM, uh, as much as you can spare without you know slogging down your actual main computer. Um, so if you can, if you have eight gigabytes. Uh, you're probably not going to want to be doing this. Uh, 16 is what I would really recommend uh, for your total, and then give it a good quarter of that. Le at least four gigabytes for the virtual machine uh, is probably as is, is low as I would go. So you want to hit next. 
uh, you want to make sure you, uh, this middle radio box is create virtual hard disk now and create and you want to hit VHD here in the middle next and you want to make sure dynamically allocated is also installed or uh, selected hit next and here is where you select the hard drive size um, it defaults for Windows at 50 gigabytes I just go ahead and leave it there um, and then you've created it. Now technically you could go ahead and hit start and you'd end up with a black screen. So you have some more steps to do. So you want to right click on this and hit settings. And we'll move this down to here. I'm sorry I can't make this a little bit bigger for you people. For you people. For you guys. <laughs> All right. Um, the first thing you want to do is go down here to display. And you want to make sure that this is as high as you possibly can get it uh, for your video memory. Okay. And I always select enable 3D acceleration so that I can crank that right up to 256. It makes Windows look a little bit better. On Windows or on Linux, you don't always have to do this, um, but it's good to do. Um, the next thing you want to do is go down here to storage and hit this empty thing here uh, where it says empty. And then you want to click twice on this and then choose uh, choose or create a virtual optical disk and then you'll get this pop up here and you can either hit add if it's not if it doesn't appear in this list and, and then you just navigate to your downloads folder um, I've already done this so it's already right here Windows 10 20h2 English 64 ISO I choose that and I want to hit click I want to click uh, live CD DVD and then hit Okay, I think I'm pretty sure that's all I needed. Oh, you want to? I need to go through and do uh, change the the processor. So you want to also hit go up to system, and here where it says processor, you want to give it more than one core. I'm going to ahead and give it four cores of my eight core CPU. Um, I, I guess it's it counts as sixteen, so I give it four. So I give it a quarter, and then and then it's okay to hit hit okay. Um, now. You can hit start. Um, hmm, this didn't happen the last time I was doing it. So, if that comes up, just go ahead and hit start. Um, that just means you've downloaded your uh, guest editions, and then it, it will it will probably go through and see. I did I did this earlier, and it had no problems. Okay, so um, close. No, nope, we just want to close that down and maybe restart. See if it will go through. No bootable medium found. Okay, we did something wrong. All right, hit settings. Go back to storage. Oh, you want to see where it says this? That's definitely not the way it's supposed to be. Look this here and this here choose okay now see if that comes up again here we go that's working that that's really weird um anyways for whatever reason it switched to the iso of the guest editions instead of reading off in the windows iso um, if that does it to you, just got to go back through and make sure you've selected the right thing. Um, after this, it's just a basic Windows setup. So I'm going to go ahead and try to make this a little bit bigger. Um, and we'll go ahead and uh, hit next. Install now. I'm going to go ahead and run, run you right through this. This shouldn't take too awful long. Um, I'm not going to enter a product key because... Um, I just, you know, don't, you choose your version of Windows. I always just do home because all the rest of them are scams, basically. <laughs> I mean, they have way too many SKUs. Um, and you want to hit custom, and you want to hit new, and apply, okay, and then next. And then it's going to go through, and then it's going to install Windows. Um, and I will go ahead and cut the video off here, and I'll come back when Windows is installed. And I'll show you how to install guest editions. Okay, I'm back. Um, once Windows installed, you'll 
get Cortana here and it will help you through setup. Um, we just go ahead and this is the most annoying part of Windows is setting it up most of the time. Uh, what's great about Linux while we're waiting for this <laughs> is uh, all you have to do is install it. Once you've installed it, you can start using it. Um, Windows, you have have to set things up. Like, why do I have to set things up? It should. It's already installed. What's more, that is more there is there to do. I, I mean, I can understand like network, sure, but I don't want to have to use an account. Why do I have to use an account? And there's no way to not use an account, as far as I know. Um, so I'm gonna give them. I have a Microsoft account because, of course, I do. Oops. Yes, my Microsoft account is a Gmail account, so screw you, Microsoft. <laughs> uh, and then the password. This is, I mean, and a PIN. Like, I have a password. Why do I also need a PIN? A PIN is not as nearly as secure as a, as a you know, your account requires a Windows PIN. Like, no, it doesn't. I don't need a PIN. Oh, fine. Oh, Microsoft, you're a pain in my ass. This rant was brought to you by the Linux cast. <laughs> okay, like, are we there yet? Do it later. I would have done all of this later. Um, and there's only save files to this PC, okay? Because... OneDrive deletes files all the time. Why would you want to use it? Uh, uh, no thanks. Not now. I showed you this so, so I could bitch at somebody about how terrible Windows is. Uh, th and there's somebody out there, well, well, then why do you want to install Windows? Because I want to play Hearthstone and Blizzard won't bring it to Linux. I mean, it's really as simple as that. Not that I, you know, expect Hearthstone to be fantastic on a virtual machine. We're just gonna have to. F I haven't tested that out yet. I might do a separate video on that. Uh, we'll see. If not, subscribe to Super Noob, and you'll see me play some Hearthstone on that channel. I'll leave the link for that in the description below as well. This might take several minutes. Okay. Well, now I'm done bitching. I'm gonna go ahead and hit pause again. Okay, here we are again. Windows is installed. Yay! No, I, I don't want to do any of that stuff. Windows is <laughs> terrible. Anyway, so, so the question is, how do you get this to at least take up the full screen? And the answer to that is you have to do guest editions. So once you're here, go up here to this device menu and click insert guest editions add on CD image. And it's going to download some things probably for you. It may not if you've done it before. Um, I think now, I think it will ask you a couple things uh, if, you do, if you've done this for the first time. Uh, all you have to do then is hit OK twice. All right. Now you want to open up your uh, file manager here um, and hit this PC and see where it says VirtualBox Guest Editions, you want to double click on that and then you want to choose one of these last two. So if you want, uh, if you downloaded the 32-bit, you want the last one. If it's 64, you want the 64 one. Hit yes, hit next, hit next, hit install. Wait for it to yeah, hit install again. And then hit reboot now and just finish and it will reboot your reboot your machine. And another thing that Windows will take forever to do is reboot. Um, and I'm not sure what those visual artifacting is about. What what all that what that's I'm not sure what's going on. I have a feeling that has something to do with me being in a window manager versus a uh um like a desktop environment. So if now if you hit your 
right control and the F key, it's going to take you to this, which is complete uh, BS. I'm not sure why it won't go full screen like a regular VM. I haven't figured that out yet. But if you hit the, um, if you if you exit out of that by that menu there at the bottom, and then hit your, your control and your F key again, it'll actually bring you back here. It's a pain in the butt, and I'm also not sure why uh, your my taskbar is transparent. That's another bug. I'm not sure what's going on there. Maybe I'll be able to figure that out sometime. But anyways, that is how you install Windows 10 on in VirtualBox on Linux. Um, like I said, there are some bugs. Uh, I'm sure I'm doing something wrong there. The things you'll definitely make sure, need to make sure you've done prior to this that I just want to highlight. You want to make sure that you've set your VRAM as high as it will go, either 128 for regular or 256 if you've enabled 3D rendering. Uh, you may end up having it uh, run better without the 3D uh, gra th the 3D graphical rendering or whatever. Um, so try both ways. Um, the other thing is make sure you've allocated Windows enough cores of your CPU. Otherwise, this will be so slow, it'll be completely unusable. Anyways, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. If not, give us a thumbs down. Give us a subscribe if you're interested in seeing more tutorials, rants, raves, podcasts for the Linux cast, all those things. And hit the notification icon so you don't ever miss a video. We'll see you next time.